Yes, that's incredible. I, I'm not really a techie person, but I immediately fell in love with these TVs. I'm, I'm a fan. It's really helped. I have awful eyes, and I love that the color is so vibrant, but it's not due to too much light, right? So it's actually much easier on the eyes, and as I learned, it's actually better for kids. My kids have to watch all clothes, so it's better for their eyes. And I know there's another big, big fan here of the LG OLED TV, okay? And I got the privilege to hang out with him the last time we were in Korea. So ladies and gents, please welcome Gadget Freak and LG OLED TV Ambassador, Mr. James D. I'm great. Yeah. I'm, really, I'm really great. Just came back from a trip. I'm so excited to be here. And I want to just congratulate LG for what a wonderful venue to host this. Because it's like a piece of art itself, right? So to have it here in the museum, a national museum, thank you. Thank you also, the director. This is, this is really a milestone. Spectacular, right? Okay, tell me first, your first reactions about the OLED TV experience. Like when you first saw it and then had it in your house. Okay, there's some inappropriate words that are not suitable for children because it was that's usually my first reaction when I saw it. That was wow, it was really I mean look at this. How can you how can you not? That's that's thinner than my cell phone right there. And so when you put that on your wall, it becomes a piece of art in itself. I mean it's a it's a furniture piece, a piece of art, it's a conversation piece. Even if it's not turned on, you're already like, wow. Correct. Or yes. there are just there are times when I go home and I just watch the TV. There's nothing showing on it. I just watch it. If I could have a security guard standing right there so nobody else touches it, I would. It really has changed the viewing experience. Okay. What do you guys like to watch on the TV? Well, that's the thing. We all don't want to watch the same thing. It's very rare that we find one thing that we all watch. I have kids from 18, well, he's 19 now, 12, um, and I have a 14-year-old daughter. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, we're, there's always a struggle. So. What ends up happening is either we, we pick something on Netflix, that's a family movie, um, or what we love to do as a family is we gather around and we have YouTube nights. And YouTube nights is where you go around and you get to choose, like if we have the five of us, I get I choose one and then somebody says, okay, I, I'll choose the next one, the next one, the next one. So we just keep going around. So you're never really stuck with more than three or four minutes of a, a video that, just in case like one of my youngest picks a really bad one. We only have to sit through it for three, four minutes. How very millennial of you guys. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my kids would love that as well. Um, speaking of YouTube, I remember we were discussing uh, when we were there. Uh, you said, I said, what's the added value of the voice commands, right? And you said one of the things was, if you have your TV to the internet, it's a great help when you're searching for videos. It's huge. Yeah. It, it really is huge. Now, when you, when you talk about voice commands, um, we usually, we're used to it on our phones, right? And sometimes people will say, well, come on, what's, what's just simply pressing a button or whatever? But once you get used to it, when you're on a remote control trying to type, that can get very painful. It's not like a smartphone. So you have to cursor up, A, cursor down, 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 B, cursor. It can really take a long time. So it's not designed to be used as a text pad. So when you have your voice command, you just say, like you're talking and sometimes we're just talking about whatever and you're saying, oh, you know what? You got to see this clip of whatever this, let's say Conor McGregor fight. Uh, YouTube, open UFC, Conor McGregor, uh, UFC 221 or something like that. And it's there. That's amazing. It's faster That's than you would do it on your like phone. Like, dub, 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 dub. No, it's, it's really... Y-O-U-D-U-B, yeah. yeah. And the thing is, if we have smartphones, we have smart cameras, we have smart um, gadgets already, smart speakers. Surely our television can keep up with that oh, because it's really one of the most used devices that you're going to have. Probably next to your cell phone, that's probably it for most people. Fantastic. Well, you know what? I know that you loved it so much and you actually made a vlog, mm -hmm. a comprehensive review. So maybe we can invite people to watch it. Yes, sure. This is a little thing that we uh, we did with LG and uh, just before you play, just pause for a second. It's okay. That's awkward. <laughs> It's, it's something that we decided to do and, and what I really wanted to say about the video is I really appreciate how LG just let me be me here. So I, I do some of these videos sometimes and 
when it's when corporate sort of strangle you with all these requirements it can really strangle your voice and so i really appreciate how lg were able to just give me the platform say hey do what you like and this was the result So my wife is in there busy filling it up with all the boring stuff like beds, furniture, couches, and the, the mine is far more important. You see, it's my dream home and I've got my dream TV, dream home, dream TV, dream home, dream TV, dream home, dream TV. Make sure Daniel's not coming this time. Daniel, no! Let's go and install these boxes of happiness in the house. Ooh, I always wanted to do that. Now, you're probably wondering why there are two TVs, and actually, so is my wife. So let's tackle that later. Right now, just a recap. If you were paying attention in the first vlog, you'd know that OLED technology basically gives you perfect glass, which gives you perfect color, which gives you perfect viewing angle, perfect design, and perfect HDR. So, what makes this so different? What makes it better? What makes it worthy of an upgrade? And more importantly, what made it the world's best-selling OLED brand? First, let's talk about the design. This thing here is a talking piece in the house. You've got the picture of one glass over here, which is really classy, plus this whole floating effect. But I think the whole big thing for me here is the stand. The stand is not just a stand. It actually stands for something. <laughs> See what I did? Never mind. It incorporates the speakers here, so it's nice and flush and integrated. It becomes more of a talking piece on a TV in some ways. And this thing looks brilliant even when it's off. Did your mother send you to say that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, all right, there are two reasons. The one between you and me, I just want one, right? Number two, so what they've done is they've made the base a lot longer and it's curved. This gives you extra stability. You know how when you get all excited playing your PlayStation, sometimes the thing rocks? We don't want it to fall, well, that will help with that. Plus, you can have the ability to put the speakers behind here. So the difference between the two picture quality is exactly the same. Don't worry about that. If you're after a bit more of a fine piece of furniture versus a more functional piece of television, well, that's basically the difference between the two. You think you'll buy that? Now, another really cool feature, and for me, arguably, this is the best new feature of the new TV, is OLED meets AI. Now, we already have this stuff in our smartphones and our smart speakers, so it's only natural that our smart TVs should keep up. Sometimes, I feel it's the only one I can really talk to, but that's another story for a whole other time. You see, my previous model already had the voice commands, but that could only do things like open Netflix and some basic other stuff. This one, well, it can do a few more complicated commands. For example, I could go volume 100. Just like that. Pretty cool, huh? What? I can't hear you! Okay, fine, it's too loud! Volume 50. Happy now? Happy now! Another new feature is the Alpha 9 or the A9 Intelligent Processor. What is it? Well, in every TV, just like in every computer, in every camera, smartphone, anything that's really intelligent, it needs a processor because that acts like the whole brain of the thing. Now the Alpha 9, what it does is it improves specifically on two key areas. You've got picture rendering and high frame rate support. What are those? Don't worry, I'll explain. Trust me, I'll make it easy for you. Now with regards to the picture rendering, the A9 Pro 